Do you want to get your remote recordings going from this to this? Remote recordings are really taking off at the moment. A lot of podcasters rely on getting really great and interesting guests on their shows. But what if you want to get a really great guest from another city or even another country? Podcasters should always think big. That's where remote recordings come in. The world has seen an uptake in remote recordings at the minute and there are plenty of great ways to do it. But remote recordings have their issues. Things almost always seem to go wrong, especially when your guest has pretty terrible Wi-Fi and don't even get us started on the vodcasters that need video to go with their audio. What if we told you we had a pretty good solution that tackles both audio and video for your podcast? This is Riverside.fm. <laughs> Here at podcast.co we've been working on lots of remote recordings recently and we've used every single type of software you could think of. But in our experiences so far, Riverside.fm is definitely the best. It's great for recording audio and video and today we're going to show you how. As far as we're aware, it's the only software that you can use that can record high definition separate audio and video tracks for every single guest, which really make getting into the edit for both the audio and the video really easy. The biggest issue that we've come into contact with so far is terrible Wi-Fi, but with Riverside it records all your audio and your video tracks locally, so they record it straight onto the computer of the guest. This means that if their Wi-Fi does drop out temporarily, you're not going to hear any strange glitch sounds in the recording. Many other remote recording softwares allow you to set up really basic setups, which you can do with Riverside.fm, just a simple USB microphone and your built-in webcam. However, with Riverside, you can really upgrade your setups and include external DSLR cameras, external microphones, and even use things like audio interfaces or mixing desks to really get that studio quality in your remote recordings. Now, setting up your remote recording with Riverside is really easy. Once you've made an account, just click Create New Podcast, and then you'll get a link which you can send out to all your guests. So this is Ben, who's one of our videographers here at podcast.co. Thanks, Jack. So this is my... Riverside uh, remote recording setup. Um, I'm using a GoPro Hero 7 for the video. So I'm using a capture card as well, straight into my Mac Mini. So it should look really good, should look better than the webcam. I'm also using a Neumann U87 microphone, which is a two grand mic, but it sounds really good. It's a condenser mic. Uh, it's going into the Focusrite 2i2 Scarlet. And that's what's getting my audio. So this is what it looks like and this is what it sounds like so on my end i am recording using the show sm7b which is a podcast.co favorite uh, that is feeding through onto the roadcaster pro uh, which is then going straight into our imac and for video i am shooting using the lumix gh5 which we use for almost all our videos here on the podcast.co channel it's very handy being able to record up to eight guests i'm not sure why you need that for a podcast but it's there if you need and there are lots of other pros to use in Riverside. In terms of cons, there are a couple. Um, personally, if I was producing a podcast, I think I would want a bit more control over the guest's audio, especially if the guest isn't an experienced podcaster and they might not know what they're doing. Uh, I think I'd like a bit more control to be able to upgrade their levels a bit. We have actually spoken to the team at Riverside.fm about this and they have assured us this is a feature that they're working on. So yeah, we're looking forward to testing that out. Another small issue is when you first start your recording, there's a small tick box for the echo remover. And one thing we have noticed is that with certain microphones or certain setups, that echo remover doesn't sound great. And so I'd actually recommend keeping it off, not turning it on. Overall, it's really great. Having the ability to record separate audio and video tracks locally really helps us out in the post-production stage. Uh, it's really quick and simple to sync everything up and it just gives you a little bit more flexibility and creativity in your edits. So overall, Riverside.fm is some really easy software that you can use to record really high quality podcasts and vodcasts remotely. And don't forget that once you've recorded them high quality podcasts, you can upload them to us at podcast.co. There are lots of other features that we've not really spoke about because they may be not the best for podcasters. But you can also take live calls, which is great for if you are hosting a radio show maybe. And you can also live stream with it if you upgrade to a more expensive package. So what do you think of Riverside.fm? Will you be using it? Have you had any bad experiences with remote recordings previously? Let us know in the comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for watching and happy podcasting.
Hey, before you go anywhere, I have a quick question for you. Do you have a podcast? And if you do, do you want to book more interesting, high profile guests on your show? Well, if you answered yes to either of these questions, I'd love to invite you to come and join our community over at matchmaker.fm. Matchmaker is a service that connects awesome podcasts just like yours with incredible and high profile guests that make for really interesting conversations. It's really straightforward to get started and completely free to sign up. Just connect using your LinkedIn, Facebook, or Google account, and then you can begin connecting with guests based on their area of expertise, location, and much more. If you haven't checked it out already, go to matchmaker.fm, get started. It's just like Tinder, but for podcasters.